Wait, let me ask you, both of you ladies, this, uh, there are two cliches that always go around about people who go into the theater. One is that the theater is where unhappy children end up. And the other, more recent one, uh, an article I read about um, Nicol Williamson, the actor, and that is that the theater is not where unhappy children go, but where the parent's favorite would end up, the most adored child, because they've been the center of attention as children. And the only place they can ever get that universal center of attention again is on the stage. And so they go into the theater for that reason. Is there anything to any of this? No. Oh. <laughs> no, usually the children that go on the stage are put there by uh, ambitious stage mothers who are really, what, tigers? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they put their children on the stage. What was that lovely song? It was at Cole Porter. Don't put your children on the stage, Mrs. Mrs. Think. Worthington. Mrs. Worthington. Yeah. That's yes. Right. yes, and I was in a in a, an elevator one time coming down from CBS. Oh, I mentioned another. Now you've done it. Uh -huh. I've said it. And uh, there was a little boy, and with his mother, and his mother had the real face of a stage mother. Can't you recognize them a block off? Mm -hmm. Well, anyway, there they, are, there they were. And he said with a deep sigh, I wish I wasn't in this business. Oh. Oh. So tragic. Oh. There's a family in California that they've had about, well, this is at the time of All This in Heaven too, which is many, many years ago. And we had one of their children. They raised them for movies. Mm. They kept them at every age for movies. They just bred them for that purpose. They bred them for this purpose, <laughs> seriously. Yeah. Yeah. And little Reynald was about four years old, probably one of the brightest, dearest children I've ever known in my life. But they never let him go outdoors because he got all the sickly parts. Oh. He was having his life ruined. They kept him in the shade. Oh, he was uh, always pale and kind of sickly. <laughs> no, indoors even. Oh. That's awful. Now, but to there... answer your question, I've never been able to answer that question of why, yeah. why any of us in the beginning, because with all the nerves of theater, every time I'm in an opening night or even coming on here tonight, I still have my nerves to come on here. And my famous expression is, why didn't mother tell me? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, because it is a diabolical business. Of course, you don't understand what it's going to be when you start. And maybe it's just something you have to do. I think it's probably something you just have to do. Yes, it is. I think that's, it sounds silly, but it's something in you that has to express yourself in, 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 in another way than just growing up in suburbia and leading an ordinary life. Something about you was a little different. Now, if you don't, if you see someone who doesn't have that, Betty, and you know that they are knocking themselves out and they're never gonna get anywhere, a young actress. Can you, can you take him aside and say, look, you, you don't have the stuff, kid? Well, it's a pretty hard thing to do mm -hmm. because many, many young people, I think you will agree, in the beginning seem to have nothing at all. Yeah. And, and, and with work and lots of training, which is not done so much anymore, the training part, they, they do, they develop when they sometimes don't seem to have a natural talent at all. I think some of those people become better performers because they really have to work harder. And for instance, the, the, the person born with a natural voice, you know, where they say you're going into opera tomorrow, I, I, I think maybe gets spoiled very young. Yeah. Could you? Could because you it is basically work and learning and there are no shortcuts. And I think all this you will agree with. But often you can't tell in the beginning if the person has it or not. I was certainly the least likely young woman to succeed. No, no, quite serious, yes, no, because no. of my New England background. Yeah. I was uh, uh, certainly no type of a, that you would think would be an actress. Before I started studying voice, you couldn't have heard me down to those people in the first row. Plus, you know, a real Yankee accent, you know, I'd say, pack a pack the car in Harvard Square. <laughs> you know, and the first time in dramatic class that I read this sentence, of course, they all burst out laughing, and I burst out crying with humiliation. So, it's a very risky thing to take upon yourself to play God with talent. Mm -hmm. 
right. Often, uh, when 40 years have gone by and it's a great friend and they're starving to death, I have had the courage to say, really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 40 years. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> I guess that's true. I mean, but of I course guess. you stopped me. It sounded differently than I meant it, the yeah. really, but. Well, that's a good rule. It, it, if they it, haven't eaten or gotten a job in 40 years, really, tell them that they're... No, no, I mean at 40 years old. Of course, they'd only yeah. been working about 20. But this is particularly with a man, this is a tragedy. To oh, me, yes. this is a tragedy. Because they always think it will happen. This is one of the magic parts of the theater and one of its worst points. Because, for instance, I gave myself five years. And if nobody had seen I had anything in five years, I would have changed my profession. There's always that hope that just tomorrow might be the... Well, this, is, this, this doesn't eventually happen after a while. But you see, one of the things that is very important, I have heard Betty says it now, and well, many of the others have said it, about mm. hard work. Well, of course, anything to do with theater, to me, is not hard work at all. It is a very exciting experience, anything that you do mm -hmm. with it. But then there is a thing that Moss Hart once said, and it is so true, luck. A lot. Lots of luck. You bet. Yeah. And uh, this, it's having the right part come at the right time. Walking around the corner and walking into a, a, a man who was a producer and said, just the person I've been yeah. looking at. That's the sort of thing. That's the fairy tale part of it. That's right. Yeah, and the fact that there are a few of and those is what, what keeps... And that's what keeps so many people going, you yes. see, so long, because yes. they right. may turn that corner. That's right, or sit but, at the right fountain. But you know. uh, they may have the, the ability and the gift, mm -hmm. but the luck may not come. You really believe that's true? Yes, I do. Do you believe You really believe there are some people who never sort of made it, mm. that it was... It, they had great talent, but no luck. You think that's, that's possible? Yes, it is possible. Except that uh, if you make the better mousetrap, it's, it's, it's yes. a possibility there, too. Yes. But um, there, um, you always find, that I, I will admit to you, you find when the person has the gift, somehow that something happens. But somewhere along the line, you've got oh, to have the luck. Oh, have to, have to. Yes, I agree.